Hey, what's going on? Everyone knows who for you here, and I've got a preview of the Tier 8 cruiser Pyotr Bagration. And I have no clue if I pronounced that correctly. It's Russian, and Russian is not my primary language, not even my secondary language. Actually, of all the languages and pronunciations I know, it's probably towards the bottom. So, I'm not going to claim that I know how to pronounce it correctly. I'm just going to call it the uh, Bag Ration from now on. I mean, no, I'm not even going to call it that. I'll just call it the Piotr, even though I know we have another one. So, first I'm just going to talk about the stats of this cruiser. Uh, before I get to that, though, I have an Orkin that World of Warships has provided me with to give away to you all. So, if you want a chance to win the Orkin, that destroyer, that Tier 8 destroyer, all you have to do is comment on this video, and I will draw through one of the various programs online that selects random comments, a random comment to win the Orkin. Please leave your in-game name and your region. And I, I think uh, they'll be giving out the ship at the end of, or the beginning of June or something like that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, Wargaming has us uh, provide the winners and then they do it on their own time. So can't guarantee when you get it, but you'll get it. So anyhow, on to the Piotr, the Bagration. Again, don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, survivability, 42,000 hit points. Artillery, you've got a main battery of 3x3, 180 millimeter guns. Your maximum firing range on these is going to be 18.5 kilometers. So, kind of echoes of the Kutuzov right there in its range. Not the fastest firing guns in the world, though. You're looking at 11 seconds, so that's pretty slow, actually. And your fire percentage chance, you're, you're only rocking 13% right there. So, I, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's also not that spectacular. Shell velocity, though, you're looking at 930 meters per second for AP and 920 meters per second for HE. The, the guns feel like they have a pretty low arc to them, so eh, no complaints there, really. Cool thing about this ship, torpedoes, it has them. Two quintuple launchers on each side. Have a maximum range of 8 kilometers and fly at 55 knots, which isn't really flying. It's kind of moseying along compared to some of the other torps in this game. Anti-aircraft capabilities of the ship are pretty stout. Out of 100, you rate an 85. Maneuverability on this ship. Got a maximum speed of 36.2 knots, turning circle radius of 890 meters, and a rudder ship time of 8.4 seconds. She is not a very nimble feeling ship. And in my opinion, she feels like she takes a long time to get started. So, just keep that in mind with this ship. Concealment, you're looking at a detectability of right around 11.1. .1. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much on par for a Tier 8 cruiser. Ammunition and consumables, you have heals. You have the choice of either Hydro or Defensive AA. I choose Defensive AA, and of course Repair. So, this, this ship, it, it kind of offers some stuff that the Kutuzov does not, in that you have heals. I mean, very good AA platform, just like the Kutuzov. However, I'm just going to tell you right now, I feel like I was kind of let down by the guns on this ship. I, I feel like they're just not very effective, especially when you're going up against more hardened enemies at Tier 9 and Tier 10. I, I don't know. I just had a hard time citadeling anything. AP's not good against high-tier battleships. HE is just kind of middling. It doesn't do that well. I mean, I feel like I was setting more fires with my secondaries than I was with my primary guns, which that, that's never a good feeling right there. Never a good feeling at all. So, secondary ornament on this, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, and the HE percentage chance is only 6%, but I feel like I was setting more fires with that when I got in close and personal. And again, you've got those torpedoes, which are cool. 8 kilometers. The arcs aren't that bad on them, but again, really the only draw to this ship is the fact that you have those heals. Those heals, well, yeah, just those heals. Really, I, I don't see why I would want to play this over a Kutuzov. I, I feel that the HE just really isn't that great. The AP, I, I don't know if I was just not hitting the sweet spot or I was in the wrong distance from anything, but, you know, it, it just didn't do it for me. So, this ship, overall, if you don't have the Kutuzov, I, I guess this is the closest thing you can get to it right now at Tier 8, but I, I just really did not enjoy it that much, and 
that and the the Okakov or Ochagov or however you pronounce that ship, the other tier eight in here. I, I don't know. It's it's almost like Wargaming said, "Hey, let's spit out two Russian cruisers that aren't extremely powerful to prove that Russian bias does not exist." Almost like they're throwaway cruisers, even though they're, even though they're not throwaway. And the uh, the other cruiser I, I did fare a little better in, and it does have some redeeming values. Actually, out of the two, I feel that that's the better than the Pyotr Bagration. Or once again, however you pronounce this ship. So there you have it, tier eight Pyotr Bagration. Uh, if I were to give it a point total, since this is review. You know, I'm inclined to give it a 6 out of 10. It, it did not suit me. I know there's some other players out there, some other CCs that had a lot better luck than I did, uh, that seem to think more highly of this ship, but for myself, it, it just didn't do it for me. I, I did not like this ship that much. However, you all might. So I, I'm not going to tell you one way or another that the ship's horrible. It just for my play style and... My experience in it, it just did not add up to what I would like to see in this type of cruiser. However, it is nice not having an overpowered uh, Russian cruiser for a change. This one seems... And maybe that's the thing. Maybe I'm just so used to them playing a lot stronger that now that I have one that plays normally, you know, I, I'm not used to it. But either way, I, I think some of you out there that consider yourself more average players, casual players, will find yourself having a little trouble in this ship. You might not like it as much. Uh, some of you better players even might um, not care for it that much. You really can't hide behind islands and sling HE with this ship because the arcs are a little lower. So you're kind of limited in what you can do in this ship. So just, just keep that in mind. The ship is going to be a premium ship. Don't know how it's going to come to you all don't know what ways you're going to be able to pay for it so keep your eyes out for it and you know wargaming might even give me one to give away to you all in the future who knows and i'll, I'll keep you aware of that as well uh just as i have for the orkin but here you have it six out of ten and that's that's being somewhat fair and you know what i'll give it a plus one minus one <laughs> so anywhere from five to a seven uh for you better players out there or you unicum players you might actually enjoy this ship i don't i don't know uh, for you average to casual players out there, you might find this ship to be abysmal for your uh, gameplay, so you might be more on the five side of this. So, gave you a little wiggle room right there in this ship review, just to be fair to the ship itself and to those of you all out there that are looking to play this. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment on this video for a chance to win that Orkin. Again, put your region and your in-game name, and I'll catch you all later. Zoop out.